So if you stay on it, then you, getting in and out of shape is rough. Yeah. So why not just stay on it? It's not like you have to do so much, but you have to maintain. You see, people see me and they say, well, Hoffman, do you work you two hours a day? No, I do enough. I do about an hour. Some days I do 30 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes I don't have but 15 minutes. It's and then I'm going to do my abs. There you go. I'm not worried about my chest. I'm worried about my arms. I'm going to do my abs because they say your stomach is the window of your health. Yeah. See what I mean? They say if everybody had a body part they could have, what would it be? And they say it would be the six pack. Everybody wants a six pack. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And I you mean, know what? I myself would just to touch a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And let me give you some respect where respect is due. Everybody knows right now that soccer is considered the global sport, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Look how they look but, like they but, in but, shape. You no, know, but they're Lord. here. Well, check this out, Mario. The global sport that was in place of soccer back in the day of Jack Johnson was boxing. Oh, yeah. It represented a Gladiator, whole culture. Right. Yeah. It's the only sport that lost its glamour as it relates to the globalization, how countries represented and stand, stood behind a sport. I don't know how it got lost. Well, crime, because yeah, betting it, and crime and all those things started to influence. It was, the, yeah. it was the business aspects that got into boxing. Right. Right. You know, it, it, we've had a number of sports go that way. Boxing started right. off that way because it represented a culture of money a, and a lot. Money, betting, and money went money, betting, track and that. field. Jesse Owens represented the movement in a not, number of fronts. Unfortunately, the, the front that didn't give him the love he really wanted to was back here at home. So we have a lot of history. So when he says Jack Johnson, I sit there and go like when you go see the story over and over again. Hey, good. That's a it's story. A, for, that's a story for everybody. He to was. Look at. You know yeah. what? I keep saying. To be in the in that place where he was, I'm going to deal with the white women. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to whoop ass. And I'm going to be a physical specimen. And I'm going to hit you in a way you guys have never been hit by an athlete such as myself. Yeah. Under those times and have laws changed to reflect him changing the landscape of what the Caucasian movement was. We are the dominant ones. And I, hey, look, I may not have everything correct, but I can tell you this much. When you go look at the story. They actually changed the rules so they That's can right. make him lose. They That's did. Right. It's unbelievable. The, the, the story is unforgivable blackness, yeah. which you can find on YouTube, and it talks about Jack Johnson's life and his story, and his struggles and and what he went through and his refusal to be not recognized and respected as a man. And it had everything to do with um, with where we are today. Right. You know, um, the, the one of the things I love about California is the diversity, as we was talking earlier. And among the younger generation, you find the United Nations. You find a black, you find a white, you find a Chinese, you find an Arab, you find a Jewish person, you find all of the different nationalities, you find the Spanish, and they're more in tune with where the world is going than the older generation. Right. You know? um, but it's all good. You know? yeah. we, we're moving in that direction. I want to give a shout out to also... Um, uh, the uh, the great William Reed, he's a, he's a great director that gave me some good advice. And though I don't talk to him often, um, he gave me some good advice the day I met him, and which was real simple advice, you know, um, keep your pedal to the metal, you know. Um, he told me I was a great actor, and that was very motivational coming from him. Right. You know, he said, what are the chances, you know, that you would meet me with filming a movie on Hermosa Beach? up on the rooftop. Hey, Javier, what's good? And I was with Javier and and another guy and William Reed pulled up on the roof and this candy apple red Bentley, him and another guy going to look at property on the beach, right? And he was like, mm. you guys gonna be up here, you watch my car? And we was doing an infomercial about racial profiling is wrong, interesting enough. And it was about my car being stolen. Uh -huh. I as a black man and there's a big giant fat security guard who's up there eating up stuff and flirting with the ladies he sees a guy in my car white guy under my dashboard hot wiring my car and he said can I help you what's going on he says I'm trying to find my kill switch the story is is that if it was a black man he would say what are you doing and say can I help you and white guy said I got it from here so he drives off with my Lexus I pull up on the phone in my suit briefcase and talking about the deals in Europe and the deals in China and Africa. Where's my car? <laughs> then the fat guy's like, uh-oh. So William Reed 
He saw us perform. He saw me jamming the guy. You know who I am. What were you doing to people? You let them take my car. What were you doing? Eating and going through the whole thing. And, and he was over there just clapping. Anyway, he came and talked to us. He talked about how happy he was to meet Richard Pryor back in the day when it wasn't popular. Right. And that what he said, Richard Pryor called me brother. Now, this is a white man, a Caucasian man, William Reed. Look him up. He's, he's a very down-to-earth guy. Let me know that, you know what real people was like and what and how he appreciated Richard Pryor because his friends Richard Pryor and some others they went to perform for them because he's in the military at the time and his friends were like don't go down I wouldn't go down and he said but I wanted to meet Richard and he walked up on Richard Pryor reading the magazine he said hey Richard and Richard said hey brother and that hit him I can tell you really appreciate Richard called me brother so yeah, shout out to William Reed and wow. it, all the rest of y'all. I, I'm not thinking of your <laughs> names right now, but I'm loving y'all and hopefully y'all, y'all watching the show. I'm having a great time here with Mario and and Vince. They, hey, you know, just call me Dark Matter, man. Dark Matter. That's right. Right there. <laughs> and the doctor doesn't matter. And we enjoy you, brother, with this wonderful insight into sports. Hey, man, you know what, Mario? And I was going to go into uh, another subject, but we don't need to because I think it's already been redone. And, and I'm done with my sports. Uh, Pete Carroll, they're, they're jumping all over him now because it's pre-football season. And they're talking about, did he run away from USC because of the sanctions and everything? And so it's a lot of pub going on right now. He's, on, he's in interviews. He's doing the, the great thing like an attorney do. Don't ask sort of the questions directly put the information around what you want to answer so i was going to actually get in and say what do you think about it but it's really too late reggie bush is already happy you know because he dated one of them kardashians (laughs) you get happy when you date one of them kardashians like sleeping on them expensive sheets you know what? It's hard to go back to them cheap sheets. Okay, see, now, now, see, it's hard now. Now you see why. You see, that, you know what? That relationship is over. Oh, it's, it's done. That's all right, but it's you done. get used to it. I should sleep on some of them Kardashians. You see, you're wrong. Put your head on that Kardashian chest. Okay. They say you sleep good. They say Lamar just drift off. Lamar <laughs> <laughs> I said I would. I want to get me a Kardashian cousin. You know what? But I can't afford nothing. I ain't got. I don't have it. You know what? If I can just get a cousin with her own money. That's been my <laughs> sports report. You see, what I warned you. I told all you right. to always wrap around sex. He can't. He can't let it go. Done. He, it's uh, the sporty time with sporty guys and sporty girls and sporty things as they sporting, sporting life. Do it, run and jump and sweat in the tight clothes. Yeah, we're sporty. <laughs> You're wrong, man. You're so yeah. wrong. Oh, I can't believe man. you do that, man. All oh, right. Man. We, you know, that's in lieu of the other announcements that we were trying to get together. Got you. You know, because, you know, we try to get the other stuff, but it's just not working sometimes. We're, we're almost at home now. We're we? almost time for you guys. We're about to get, we know it's time to get ready for the part of the show that we take so, so personally. As we get ready for the hot picks by Vic. And y'all know what the hot picks is, oh, so... <laughs> you know. right. So let's get let's get that lead in going first, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh no! The hot picks by Vic. It's not okay, that bad. <laughs> that's right. We tell you to go to that drawer in the nightstand. You know that drawer, that secret drawer in the nightstand next to the bed. You know that drawer. Get out your favorite lubricant. Cause it's time for hot picks by Vic. It's your time. To be savory, but you've got a smile affecting me. Stay in the bottle room And you seem carefree But I've got a seven ball history All by myself I slip inside the ocean for a change Don't 